Here's a must know civil FE type problem. I bet you're capable of doing this. So pause the video, try your best to arrive at an answer for this question. What you're doing is finding the minimum pipe size to deliver this discharge assuming full flow. So pause this video, do this on your own, then check your solution with mine. Okay, here we go. We're told runoff from a subdivision is collected in a detention pond and is released through a circular corrugated pipe with an end value equal to 0.03 at a controlled rate of 25 CFS. CFS is cubic feet per second. The pipe slope is 0.002 feet per foot. The minimum pipe size in feet of the metal pipe that should be used to deliver the full flow discharge is what? We want to find that and know it's in feet. So this will be an answer in feet at the end. So let's look at what we're given and what we're really dealing with first. So let's visualize this. So we know we're dealing with a subdivision. So we have our subdivision and runoff is the runoff water that goes off that subdivision after we have a rain event or storm. So we know we can imagine that. So let's say we have our subdivision. Let's just draw it like this. And let's say in this subdivision, we do develop it, put houses, put roads. It's a developed subdivision. So what we're going to do is have a rain event rain event there and when we have that rain event water runs off where is it gonna run off often we put it in a pond a detention pond and we're gonna place that detention pond downstream so what we will do is visualize a pond like this so we have our detention pond and this is gonna take in that water that runs off so we're gonna store that water and slowly release it from that pond so imagine it like this the water comes off that subdivision then it's going to go in that pond or the detention basin and then we're going to slowly release this through a pipe and in this case it's a corrugated metal pipe so that's the crucial pipe that we're dealing with that we're going to analyze so this right there is going to be our corrugated metal pipe that we're talking about and it does have certain properties and those are given in the problem statement so let's look at those so this pipe has an end value that's going to be 0.03 so what i'm going to do is denote that the end value is that manning coefficient that's already guiding us in the direction manning coefficient manning equation so we'll see how that's going to apply so the end value is 0.03 what else are we given the controlled rate is going to be set in this case it's 25 cfs so that controlled rate that we have let's denote that as q of 25 cubic feet per second or cfs what else are we given so that's that we're given the pipe slope so this thing is going to be sloped a little bit to allow it to flow through gravity or by gravity so the slope of this pipe is going to be the s value so that's going to be 0 0.002 feet per feet and now we have all of that and we want to find the pipe size of this pipe. So the pipe size is going to be the diameter. That's what we're looking at. It can't be anything else other than the diameter. So if they call it pipe size, it's always the diameter. So we're going to denote that as D. That's the question here. What's that minimum pipe size that we need to deliver that water of 25 CFS when we have full flow? very important we're dealing with full flow so what we're going to do is denote that here as what we want to find just to keep that so we want to find that diameter when we have full flow now we need units of feet when we do this quick pause if you're looking to pass your civil fe exam in the coming months you're watching the right video my civil fe exam review course will give you everything you need to know to pass your civil fe exam it's the only one resource you need to pass your civil FE exam. You're going to build your confidence as you gradually expose yourself to a variety of practice problems, as you learn the fundamentals and learn the basics when solving FE exam type problems. You're going to build your own problem solving skills that you're going to use on exam day to pass your civil FE exam. And most importantly, you will build the right mindset that works just right for you, that will help you build the study routine and a steady structure that will keep you on track. If you're interested in a civil FE exam review course, check out the link below. And please, if you have questions about the course and really need anything civil FE exam related, just send me an email. So for the solution, what would you do? 
What would you do given this information? The key here is that Manning coefficient. That Manning coefficient tells us use that Manning equation. And the Manning equation, we can use that to find the diameter when we have full flow. Because that equation can be used if it's partial flow, but that's more difficult. When it's partial depth flow, we have to use the hydraulic elements chart related to the specific line. But in this case, since we're dealing with full flow, we can strictly just use the Manning equation as we're about to do. And the Manning equation is given in the handbook by this formula. No, we're going to use the formula that has the Q because we're given that discharge here of 25 cubic feet per second. So we're going to put that in for Q and we're going to find the diameter. So let's go up top and write that formula. So we're going to say that Q equals the K value over N. So A is the area, the area of the flow depth that we have, the area of the flow. RH is the hydraulic radius and that's to the two third power and S is going to be the slope to the one half power. This is all talking about the pipe, the very important pipe we're dealing with. So now we know our Q value is going to be 25 CFS. So I'm going to do that as 25 cubic feet per second. So that's my Q. Now the K value in this case dealing with US units, that would be this. So it's going to be 1.486. So we're going to put that on top 1.486. The N value is given for this corrugated pipe. That's 0 0.03. So we just use that 0 0.03. Now the area, the area is going to be the area of the flow. Note we're dealing with full flow. So how this would look is imagine that cross section of the pipe. You want to imagine this completely full to the very top. So it's going to be full flow. So it's going to be the whole area of a circle. So this will be the area of a circle and that's going to be pi times the diameter squared divided by four. That's where the diameter term comes. And we're going to find that diameter, which is our pipe size. So that's going to be the area. So I'm going to put that here as pi diameter squared divided by four. Then we do the hydraulic radius. The hydraulic radius is defined in the handbook. So that's denoted here as the area over weather perimeter. But I want you to note this. Anytime you have full flow, the hydraulic radius is just the diameter divided by four for a circular pipe. Again, for a pipe, the hydraulic radius, when we have full flow, is going to be the diameter divided by four. Note this is for full flow when we have a pipe. So remember that it's going to save you time. So that's what we'll use for the hydraulic radius. So we're going to say it's going to be D divided by four and we raise that to the two third power. So notice now the D value is going to be the pipe size. That's what we want to find. Then we keep going. Let's do the slope now. So the slope is going to be the value is given in the problem statement. So that's going to be 0 0.002 feet per feet. And we take that to the one half power. Now we have everything plugged in and our unknown is the D value, the pipe size or the diameter. So when we solve this, we will get the D value, the diameter using this formula in units of feet. So at the end, we're going to be set to go. We do not have to convert it to inches, but be careful on the actual FE exam. You want to convert it to inches at the end if they ask that. So now given this, how would you solve this? It looks very complicated in terms of the exponents. So I'm not going to do it by hand. We want to be efficient. We want to be fast. Let's use the solver. Let's use the calculator solver. And what we'll do first is actually simplify this a little bit. So on the left side is 25 and this is going to equal. Let's simplify the values here. So if I take this value times this value, we're going to get a number. So that number should be close to 2.215 and I'll keep the rest. So the rest I'll do pi times D squared divided by four, then I'll do this D divided by four and to the two third power. Now at this point, I can use my calculator solver. So what I'll do in this video is use the Casio. So let me show you how you can plug this in the Casio and we're going to solve for that very important diameter. And that would be our answer. So we're going to go to mode. Let's go to computation mode. Always be in computation mode when we use the solver. Now we want to do on the left side of the equal sign of 25. So let's put 25 and we're going to do alpha equal. So put that pink equal sign. Then we take 2.215. So that's the value we got. Note by taking this value times this value and we got that. 2.215. 
just to simplify it, especially if we're putting it in the solver, simplify it as much as possible, then use the solver. Then what I'm going to do is multiply this by my area term, which is going to be the pi. So the pi is going to be down here and we take this times the diameter. Note the diameter is the x value. That's the unknown. So in this, you have to put that as x. So you do alpha x and then we're going to square this and you take all of this divided by 4. So that's going to be that term. Then what I'm going to do is multiply this by the diameter over 4. Note that's always the case for pipes full flow. You can always use that for the hydraulic radius. So we're going to take that right there and I'm going to do the fraction symbol. I'm going to do alpha x divided by 4 and you take all of this to the 2 third power. So raise this to the power of 2 divided by 3. 2 third power. At this point, don't click equal. You want to run the solver function. So we do shift solve. Yes, solve for x, and it's going to solve for x, so you can make a guess close to the answers. Let's say I put 5, and now it's going to run it, and it will give us that x value. So we do get about 3.84. That's the diameter we need at full flow. That's the exact diameter we need. So let's write that here, and the diameter, using the solver, is about 3.84 feet. And this right there is going to be the exact diameter we need to deliver that Q value of 25 CFS that comes out slowly from that pond at that slope at this Manning coefficient. Now based on the answer choices, which one would you pick? Maybe two options. Are you going to pick B or C? Let's take out A. Let's take out D. Likely you eliminated those. Is it B or C? You're going to go up. Go up to get the minimum. We want the minimum, so 3 is below this value. 3 would not be okay. It would not deliver that discharge of 25. 3 is not good, so anything below that value of 3.84 is not good. So the minimum one would be C based on these answer choices. Keep in mind, D is also safe. D would be safe, but we know this problem has that keyword minimum. So just the minimum one based on these choices would be C for this one. 